I live in one of those small towns with a big community. It feels like everyone knows each other, and parents would visit their friends and leave their kids to mess around with each other. Classes in school weren't very large, so when there's news about a kid dying, it travels at god speed. Everyone at school kept talking about the death of this girl who was probably a year behind me. I didn't know her personally. I wouldn't have even been able to tell you her name if everyone wasn't talking about her. I didn't want to pick up gossip about how she died. I decided to attend a funeral myself, not because we were friends or anything, but I did want to show my respect for this girl and her family. The local funeral home was within biking range of my house, and so I set off. I sat awkwardly as I noticed her parents. I'm not usually good at picking up feelings from people, but I could tell beyond their grief was disappointment and maybe even hostility. They made me wonder what she was thinking about before she died. After she was buried, I hung around the cemetery. I wish I'd brought some flowers with me, but I decided I'd give her some of the next time I'd stop by. Around this time, I'd been aiming to get a Skyform Shaman, since it was one of my favourite Pokemon back then. I'd caught a Wild Shaman using the Pokemon Modifier cheat code. I was terrible at coming up with creative names, but then I remembered the name of the girl and thought that it would suit a Shaman rather well. Little did I know that this would invite strange things to start happening to my game. I wanted to keep the Shaman in its Skyform whenever possible so I plan on keeping it in my team 24-7, only playing during daytime, etc. I was a dirty cheater who liked putting illegal moves on my Pokemon, so I taught Sky to use Fly. At the time, I didn't know you needed to catch the Shaman in Flower Paradise to receive the Grassadia flower, so when I talked to the blonde girl NPC in Floroma Town, I had no idea why she wouldn't give it to me. So, I was stuck with a Shaman that knew Fly. It was weird and I never really grew all that attached to it. Eventually, I boxed it, forgot I had it, and released it without thinking. Next time I booted up the game, I got this message. The save file is corrupted. The previous save file will be loaded. My first instinct was to panic. I didn't have any time to think or process the initial message, because all my hours were gone. With nervous anticipation, I started up the save file to see what the damage was. To my surprise, I found myself on an incomplete sea break path. The south path to Route 224 was cut off, with a featureless shaman staring vacantly over the edge. I checked my party and found none of my team members. Only a level 100 Dusk Noir with the move Follow Me. Very useful, I thought. I'd have to build up my action replay to teach this thing fly in order to get off this island later. Checking my items, I noticed that everything was gone, save for a single pokeball and an escape rope, neither of which seemed particularly helpful for getting me off this island. Out of curiosity though, I decided to see if Shaman would be at Flower Paradise. I started my trek north, lamenting the loss of my bike. To my surprise, Shaman was there, despite never having Oak's letter or triggering the cutscene with it. Its face was obstructed by flowers, but it seemed like its pink flowers were missing, just like the one I saw before. I spoke to the Shaman, and a message appeared. I remember you, but you don't remember me, do you? The wild Shaman attacked, and my heart stopped at its name. Speechless like before, I felt a knot in my stomach, not even caring about the game. Something was very clearly wrong with it, and I wanted to stop playing. But I decided I was already taking pictures of the weird stuff that was happening, and wanted to document it in full. Stealing my resolve, I went about my options. Dusk Noir only knew follow me, so it was useless to weaken the Shaman. Remembering the Pokeball I had, I tossed it at the Shaman. Most people would be ecstatic to catch a Shaman with full HP and a Pokeball in their first try, but I got the feeling that the game was rigged. There wasn't any triumphant music playing either, which really didn't help my feelings about it. 
I tried checking my newly caught shaman, but my game froze upon checking my party. Upon restarting the system and starting the game up, this message appeared. My heart is corrupted. Please save me. My save file was gone for real this time. The trainer's name was Sinner. I live in a pretty religious community, so reading this made me ill at ease. Starting up the game again, I found myself in Lost Tower, playing a featureless shaman. My only Pokemon was the same shaman, named Sinner, knowing Fly, Scary Face, Fake Tears, and Spite. A text box appeared when I tried to leave the tower. Today is the day. It pushed me back, preventing my exit. The only option I had was to ascend. No random encounters happened, and all the trainers wouldn't interact with me. It went this way until I got to the top floor. I'm pretty sure there isn't supposed to be a man and woman NPC standing in this spot. Interacting with them just prompted this text. There's nothing left to say. It was here that I noticed a staircase that wasn't supposed to be there. I found myself on top of the tower, and I stepped into a scripted event, and the shaman faced the edge without my prompt. It's a long way down. Are you ready? Hoping for some way out of this, I wanted to say no, so I could cheat my way out of the tower and get my game back to normal. However, upon selecting it, this text appeared. You've held back for long enough. It's time to go. A battle started against the same Dusk Noir as before. I was intimidated to go against the level 100 Dusk Noir, but then I remembered its only move was to follow me, so it was harmless. I realized that if I let Sinner faint, I could go to the last Pokemon Center and escape the tower. I used Spite, thinking that if I reduced Follow Me's PP, the Dusk Noir would use Struggle and OHKO my Shaman. Dang it. Deciding to experiment, I came to the conclusion that there was no harm in screwing around with Sinner's attacks until Dusk Noir ran out of PP. I chose Fly. Not the KO I was expecting, but I took it nonetheless. The game of course crashed as soon as my shaman's cry played, leaving nothing but pleasantly ear-grating screeching sounds. I decided to take a break from playing for a moment, to process what I'd just witnessed. I had a lot to digest. The only conclusion I came to was that ghosts are real, and this was the same sky as the girl who died, which would sound insane if I didn't have any pictures to prove it. I choked back the tears. I was afraid. Why did Sky want me to see this? I wanted to put the game down and be done with it. But if she had a message to give me, then I felt like I had to see it through to the end. I guess, I vainly hoped she'd pass on and find peace if I listened to what she was trying to say. Another message when I started up the game. I can't fly. I tried to. I found myself at Spear Pillar. The staircase to the Hall of Origin was in front of me. My exit was gone, so I just went straight for Arceus. A level 100 Arceus stood before me. Instead of sending out my Shaman, it stayed in the field, just like with the Dust Noir. It was now bleeding. Its status said it was fainted but it was still able to battle somehow. I felt cornered. There was no way a level 14 Shaman could take on something like this. I tried using Fly, hoping that it would give me the same result as before. Can't use that here. It wouldn't let me use the move. Instead, I just outright tried to flee. Can't escape. I braced for impact, but was pleasantly surprised to see it miss. I'm not ready yet. The game made me flee automatically, and the screen faded to black. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm scared. When the screen faded back to the overworld, I found myself in the distortion world. The portal that takes you back to the main world was gone, so the only thing I could do was explore. I found another escape rope while looking around. It was the only noteworthy thing I could find. 
So I started trying to think of ways to get out of here. I tried using fly since Sinna still knew it. There's nowhere to fly to. Figures. Trying to test my other options, I went to my bag and tried using the escape rope. Of course, the there's a time and place for everything message still appeared. Deciding to mess around until I got results, I went to give the escape rope to Sinna. Don't suppose you know what to do with this, I muttered. The game crashed again, and it assorted my eardrums once more. I sharply inhaled, wondering if I touched a nerve. I took a deep breath and started the game again. My character's name was now Sky. I started in Floroma Town, and the first thing I did was rush to the Pokemon Center to check on my Pokemon in the PC. Of course, they were all gone. I'd grieve for them later though. Maybe Sky would be nice to me and give them back. While I was in the center, I figured it might have been good to heal the faint status off Shaman. Sure it is. Glad you can tell when something is suffering, nurse. Heading outside, I talked to the blonde NPC. You should always give flowers to someone who has passed away. It's rude not to. I was suddenly feeling very guilty for not leaving flowers before. Wondering if I could fix the poor shaman in my party if I used a flower on her. I went to try it. Of course not. The blonde NPC turned into my shaman. And I spoke to her. That won't help me. Yeah. I thought not. At loss of ideas on what to do next, I absentmindedly made my way to the Valley Windworks and walked around in the grass. A wild, sky-formed shaman appeared. I sent out Sky, of course. I chose the fight option, and the battle continued without me selecting a move. The Skyform Shaman was knocked out in one hit, despite the game telling me that Sky had hurt herself. Back on the overworld, I found the mangled parts of the Skyform Shaman lying in the grass. I inspected them. Please. Put me back together. I chose yes. The screen faded to black. Sky appeared again in a black abyss, with Skyman ears and a flower. My trainer was nowhere to be seen. I checked my party to see that Sky had changed again. Her cry sounded like a distorted mix of Shaman's two forms. I went back to the overworld and was unable to move. Instead, a dialogue box appeared. Can you hear me? Thank you for caring about me. I can fly now. Because I love you. My heart skipped a beat. My hands began to shake. You must care about me too, right? So, I'm going to stay with you. I won't leave. Not without someone who loves me. Will you fly away with me? My shaky hands went to say no. I didn't want to be like her. I'll wait for you. I'll change your mind. You're mine now. You're mine. Forever. With that last line, the game froze. The first thing I did was take the game out of the system. I decided to drop off all my Pokemon games at the nearest GameStop. I didn't want her talking to me anymore. So... Why do I feel like she's still here? Hey everyone, Silver here. Thanks for watching to the end. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I want to give a big thank you to Olivia Rose for helping me out with this one. I'll have a link to her channel in the end card and in the description. So make sure to check her out and give her some support. Also, this is sort of a 300th video special, except that the 300th video was a few days ago. Now, I didn't realize the 300th video special was coming up, so there was sort of like, well, this video is 300th video, but this video right here, the one we're in right now, is the special, as you might be able to tell from the crazy formatting of today's video. Honestly, this one took hours and hours to edit, but it was worth it, and I actually really enjoyed making this video, so hopefully you enjoyed too. But, with that being said, if you enjoyed today's story, 
make sure to leave a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you in the next story.